welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, guys and gals, hey, thank you so much for tuning in to another awesome episode of Super Agents Live. Hey, listen, if you are new to the show, welcome. Thanks for showing up. We talk with top producing agents, coaches, and authors on this show. We find out how they've killed it. And and, and look, I try to dig out those nuggets so that you can take them and implement it in your business. And maybe they're not nuggets of, hey, we, you know, mechanically do this one, two, three. Maybe it's a mindset thing, you know, a lot, anything can come up on this crazy show. Now, now I just want to tell you, I, I really want to tell you, man, um, uh, you know, our, our tribe on Twitter would look, the hashtag for the show is unpack that idea. It's a big follow train. If you don't know, um, use that tweet it out and, uh, and, and, you know, it's a, I'll follow you. Uh, and I encourage everyone in our audience to go ahead and discover right? Hit that discover button on Twitter and you enter in, unpack that idea. And everybody who use that, if you're not following them, follow them. Okay. People are getting like from 100 to 300 new followers by doing that. So that's awesome. Now, look, here's the deal. I want to talk about temperament. I've been getting some, some emails or some, some tweets lately. And they're like, Oh, you know, Hey, that episode was my least favorite ever. Right. Or, or look, I'm, you know, I just don't get, and it's just, it, when it comes to business or it comes to these shows or, or anything, you know, um, look, I had Greer Allen on the show and I and Greer Allen runs Boomtown. That's a tool for teams. Now, if you don't have a team, that episode didn't speak to you. And I got some feedback. Hey, listen, that was like that didn't apply to me at all. And that's OK. You're not there yet. You're not there yet. And so maybe some guests that come on, uh, you know, maybe they're talking they're you know, they're talking about uh, building a business that. So that's in front of you, right? You haven't gotten there. So the tools they're using can't don't don't match up with what you're doing. And maybe, you know, the the people, maybe you're further along than maybe some of our guests, right? Today's guest, here's what we talk about today. And you might be further along or not as far along as this person. But we talk about, you know, we spend a lot of time, we spend about the first 10 or 12 minutes talking about social media, right? We break down, you know, you know, what are your goals? How do you identify your goals for social media? Uh, you know, how to be found on social, how to keep your sphere engaged with you and your message on social media. And we also spend some time on farming and uh, and the tactics, tactics that she uses and, you know, and how she takes or why she takes a multimedia approach instead of like, a you know, send out a recipe kind of approach. <clears throat> OK, so so um, if you love this episode, I'm glad. And if it doesn't speak to you, I'm sorry. We'll <laughs> like tune into the next one. So, but either way, look, I want to hear what you like and what you don't like. You know, I try to mix it up. I, uh, you know, I have a lot of guys on the show and I try to mix up, you know, and get some women on the show. And I found just women, their temperament is, is, is much more, you know, women are women and guys are guys. And, and, you know, I have these guys on the show. I have a, like a Grant Cardone or Tom Ferry on the show. And they're, they're you know, drive hard, right? Boom, boom, boom. And then I get, you know, women, you know, Nicole Trugowski and uh, Catherine Marcus. Awesome ladies. Awesome ladies. Um, but, you know, they're they're a little bit softer in their in their delivery. So whoever you are, whatever you like, whatever appeals to you, I hope this talks to you. Let's get to it. One other thing, real quick, just to, I totally forgot to mention a minute ago, a live event, July, July 18, which is rapidly coming up because today is July 1, 2014. July 18, um, we are going to have a live event here in San Diego. Uh, it's, it's only 10 people can come. Uh, and here's what we're going to do. We're going to rent a hotel suite. We're going to get some food catered and we're going to sit down and mastermind all day. That's why only 10 people can come. Everybody gets going to get in the hot seat. Talk about your business. Where are you struggling? Where are you winning? And and look, we're gonna help you. I'm gonna help. I'm gonna try to help you break through. I should have come up with a name for it, right? Like the Breakthrough Friday or something weird. But anyhow, if you're interested, uh, it's 150 bucks, so it's dirt cheap. Well worth it. Uh, if you want to come, send me an email, and uh, we'll get you on the list. Uh, all right, now let's get to the show. Okay, hey. 
Joanne, I've given everybody a little bit of your background, but maybe take a minute, tell us a little bit about yourself and your business. Oh, great. Hi, Toby. Hey. Uh, well, <laughs> I've been in real estate now for 14 years on Long Island. I love what I do. I um, work with a lot of top agents and brand new people and helping people, educating them and moving them forward into their businesses and then also the buyers and clients and sellers, helping them move on in their lives. Sure. Now, before, before we started recording this show, we, we talked a little bit about, um, <clears throat> about social media. Now, social media is something where everybody needs to be, and I see most agents doing it terribly wrong. Um, talk to us a little bit about how you handle social and, and, and you know, your thoughts on how to incorporate that into somebody's business. Okay, great. That's a great question. And I'll start with that I'm not uh, some, a child of the 80s. I'm actually a child of the 60s. So oh, wow. a, lot of, yeah, a lot of agents out there kind of relate with me more than the child of the 80s who grew up with uh, iPads and iPhones and things like that. So I knew I needed to learn and be good at that because that's where the business was moving. And the first thing that I try to, sh to explain and share with people is they need to have an intent. They need to know what their goal is on social media because when they start with that, everything else seems to fall into place. I think what scares a lot of people is that they don't know what they're doing there and they don't know what they're supposed to be doing there. So what I mean by this is who, what do you, what's the perception you want out there? And for me, that is I, I want to be, I want to seem professional, knowledgeable, helpful, I want to be the resource. I want to. I want people to look for me. So, with that in mind, wherever I'm on Facebook or Twitter or Pinterest or anything that I'm doing, it's always with the intention of being a professional and being, you know, showing them that I'm involved in business and education and learning and teaching and and know what I'm doing. So, that to me is like the biggest key. If you have an intent and you know the way you want to be perceived. Every decision you make on social media goes back to that. You will be able to just put stuff out there that's always going to move you forward and the conversation forward. So, yeah. So a lot of people struggle with – so. oh, sh I think – are you still there, Joanne? Yeah. Oh, sorry. I got a, I, I'm recording on Skype, and I, then I got a message anyhow. I thought you dropped. Hey, so – but a lot of people struggle with social because – and I, we talk about this on the show uh, uh, now and again, but you know, people struggle with finding their voice. So, mm -hmm. so I think for you, what you just said was, instead of finding your voice, you you said you should have an intent, and and but unpack that a little bit. So your intent is to come off as being helpful, as to being professional, but how does that translate into you know how you post or what you post on on social? All right, great question. Well, the other thing is I use social media in my business during the day as I go about it. I don't leave my business to do social media. I do social media while I'm in my business. Okay. Meaning, yeah, I use a lot of mobile apps and things like that. So I want to be perceived as somebody who knows what I'm doing and is helpful and, and professional and knowledgeable. So whenever I'm out there, whatever I'm doing, like this morning I was teaching, so I was actually teaching about a, a social media. Hmm. So I four squared from the classroom letting people know I was in my office, I was teaching, and you know, had a little conversation about that. So whatever I'm doing, if I'm showing a house, if I'm helping a client, if I'm taking photos, if, you know, it could be anything, in, it could be, I can be in a class learning, I could be the one who's being taught too. I post those kind of things on social media so that my people I engage with see that I'm always involved in my business in some capacity. It could be the teacher, it could be the, the student, it could be the agent, it could, you know, working with a client. So it's always about something that I'm doing in my day. Okay. And it takes me two seconds to do it. And people always, uh, the response I get back from others are that they feel that, you know, I am a very professional in what I do and then I'm, I'm, that's my a part of my life, everyday life is real estate. So one of the things I'm, I'm actually on your Facebook page right now, and I, I think you do do a good job of mixing up. You know, you have some, uh, you have some uh, um, inspirational little quotes here, and then you also are posting, you know, that you have an open house. You also, which I like, and I, I saw it earlier, and I can't find it now. Um, you have videos on there. You, you have video testimonials. Yeah, I do take video testimonials with, with all of the 
equipment we have today. It's so simple and yeah. so easy to have someone take two seconds and say that they, ha they had a great experience with you. I think you just saw a bio video. But uh, also on social media, it's not just my personal page, which anyone can find, but also a business page, but I have a lot of community pages also. I have a very big community page of the a location of where um, I grew up and where I live is Amityville. So it's Amityville Living with over 3,500 fans and a lot of activity on that page. So social media to me is always just putting out there what people want to hear, but engaging them too and then having them want to follow you. Right. So, so you're using social number one. So if I'm going to, you know, if I'm everybody, you know, perspective or prospects in general, whether you're a buyer or seller, they're going to vet you online. So, mm -hmm. you know, they're going to, they're mm -hmm. going to Google your name. They're going to find Joanne Mills, your Absolutely, Facebook yeah. page. Um, so for discovery, I think that's great. How do you, you know, one of the other things that you're really good at is, is nurturing relationships so that you, you know, so you keep in touch with them. So you, you know, increase your referral business. How do you use social or what your, what is your thinking around, uh, discovery versus, uh, you know, strengthening relationships? Yeah. Well, you know, you did mention that people discover you on social media and I find that it's kind of, and I was again, teaching that this morning when we don't really get discovered on social media as much outside of the industry as we do in the industry. But once we meet people, once we make that contact, once we, you know, buy, meet a buyer and seller, that's always when they're going to Google you. Yeah. So once they do that, you need to be there. You need to be out in, you know, need to come up on that front page. So that's very important to me that, that, you know, my, you could, I am found, I uh, found very easily on social media. Now, the second part of that question, you know, to remind me what it was. Oh, um, yeah, strengthening relationships. Strengthening relationships. Social media is great for that because you can, especially when it's a, a you know, a seller that's looking to sell down the road or a, a buyer you're meeting that they're not ready to buy yet, you know, become friends with them through social media. I would actually even, you know, put Google alerts about things that they like or things that they are, are part of. Mm. And so I can keep an eye on anything that might happen in their lives or in, that could touch their lives. And I can be the one to reach out to them with information that they care about. It's not a, just about what I do, but about their lives. So yeah. that's a great a little tip with Google alerts uh, about their industry, about you know their family life, about the schools that kids use. Right. And, and by the way, most people, Google Alerts is a neat little hack. Um, most people listening, because, like, you know, look, I find that realtors, for the most part, are not very technical. You know, the NAR came out with uh, some stats recently, and the average age of an agent is 57 years old. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, those guys, for the most part, you know, unless you're in my audience, those guys are having a hard time using email. That's true. That's so, why I start with that. I'm not, you know, a young agent. I am yeah. one of those. I'm not, <clears throat> I'm not the average, but a uh, below average, but I, I'm definitely not a kid, but I, you know, you can't be a dinosaur in this business. You have to be moving forward. You need to be on that cutting edge of what's out there and where your buyers and your prospective clients are. Yeah, I totally agree. So to explain to the audience briefly what Google Alerts is and, and maybe go a little bit deeper on how you use it. All right. Well, Google Alerts is pretty simple. It's, it's you know, a product from Google. You know, if you're a Google Chrome, Google Plus, I use all of their products. Um, but you could set up a Google Alert. You know, we always start with your own name, your company name, um, the area that you're doing business, real estate in. And this way you can get alerts every day if anything is ever written or put out there on the internet about you, about your company, about the areas that you're working in. But then you could take that a step further. You could just you get an email or you know, a, a about whatever it could be news, it could be an image, it could be anything that you are looking for. Right. But when it comes to a customer or a client or building a relationship, even with business partners and your dirty dozen, you know, the people that you work with, your referral partners, you could put Google Alerts in a, for them. And not only just their names and their industry and their company, but even about somebody, something that they love, something that they're very interested in. And this way, if you get that alert and you see something is happening, 
you could, you know, send that information to that person. And they could say, you know, it could be in a card, it could be in an email, it could be any way you like, or even a phone call. But they see that you care more about them than just about their business. Right. And once people know that you care, right, mm -hmm. that's when those relationships really get built. Yeah, that's interesting. So, so again, so for everybody, so, you know, Google alerts, you could uh, say, I mean, there's a bad one, but, you know, plane crash or, you know, yeah. interest rates, whatever. You, you create an alert for that. And then when something gets posted on the Internet, you get an email. Now, how do you so let's say let's say that you were going to create, uh, you know, you want to strengthen your relationship with me. So you cr create a Google alert around. Toby Salgado or, or, mm -hmm. or something I'm Absolutely. interested in, right? Like, you know, yeah. um, um, do you, do you have, so you're getting all these emails. Or is there some way that you throw them into folders? So, you, you know, you might forget that, that you're getting alert and it's me who cares about it. How do you, how do you link those two? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. What I'm asking you? That is a good question because if it's just about a topic and not about the person, right. So you'd have to have a, a good memory, right? right? So, you know, that, that is a great question. Um, I know because, again, I'm a, I'm a Google fan, the way you could set up your, you know, your emails is that you can have categories and things put into certain files as they come in. And they could be you know, important coming straight to you or they could be put into a file to look at later. So there might be an avenue to do that. Uh, we were also discussing today in class that the, you know, if there's anything you need to know, you just type in how to whatever in YouTube, including Google Earth. Yeah. Right. You know, and you will get a video on how to do it. It's pretty amazing. You, any crazy topic, you can, you can get a video on it. And, um, you know, Google Alerts is just a, it's an actual little thing that, again, people, building those relationships with people is they have to know that you, that you care, that you, yeah. that, you know, that you're important to them. And it would make a huge difference. And then what the real key to that is, instead of just sending them an email, is, you know, find the article, print it out, and send it in a note, in a card. Mm, yeah. And when they get the you know, mail in the morning and they see a card, handwritten card from you saying, just thought of you, saw this interesting topic, uh, have a great day, I mean, you, you go right to the top of the list. Right. I agree. You know, and it, you know sometimes high tech, high touch, it's, we're so high tech that sometimes that high t the touch is so much more important. I totally agree with that. So, so uh, how do you? So this is one way that you stand out in the market, right? Um, mm -hmm. You know, you're very social. People see that you're kind of everywhere out there. By the way, you mentioned YouTube earlier. Um, that is a giant platform. Do you? What about that? Do you use? I know you said you use. We talked mm -hmm. about Facebook. I want to talk about Twitter in a second. But how do you use uh, uh, YouTube, if at all? I do. I do have a, a pages on on YouTube. I use it for, you know, videos from my my listings. I do interviews for my community with business owners in the community. So, and again, simple using the iPad or my or my phone. And so we do. I do use video. I'm going to be using it more and more. And people ask me if I blog. I say, well, I blog the way I speak, so I'm better off with video. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not that good of a writer, but. Today, as you know, I think we were talking today, I don't know how many thousands of hours of video go up every day on YouTube. Right. Uh, but it is just an, an amazing. Mind-boggling. Yeah. yeah. And it's very searchable. And, it, it, and if you tag them right, meaning put, you know, put the names and, and possibly, you know, your name and what you do and where you are, it's very, very searchable when people do do that Google search. So yes, yeah, I do do I do do video. Um, you know, you know, so YouTube. I use uh, YouTube a little bit as well. It's very, very noisy. Uh, you know, it's hard to get found on there. Uh, at least in my in my experience, uh, I recently discovered Spreecast. Have you ever heard of Spreecast? Mm -mm, no. Spreecast. Uh, Spreecast is a it's a it's a weird blend of of Google Hangouts and YouTube, but it's it's uh, right now it's very open. Uh, and for me, the, the videos that I'm will be doing, uh, I'm going to be doing on Spreecast. I think uh, um, I think that's going to be a huge platform in the next few years. Well, being an early adopter of something that's coming on is also a, yeah. a key, right? Right. And it, that because there are, it is hard to become known in in a medium that's been out for a little while, and there's so many people out there. So it is good to keep an eye on what's new and what's different. And, and become really great at that. So again, so Joanne, you're, you're doing all this stuff. I'm sure your business right now is heavily skewed 
towards referrals. Um, do you know what, what percentage of your business comes from referrals these days? I would say probably 70% of my business comes from referrals. Uh, it could be from even in the industry where I just uh, received a listing last week from an, a broker uh, in, in Queens. So they called me up and referred me. I'm getting another one. Or, and people I just know, people know me. Actually, I have one recently that I am, I'm picking up a listing that it was someone from Facebook. She sees me on Facebook, and I got a, I got an email from the seller who's down in New Orleans, and she asked you know, to hire me. As it turns out, the woman who referred me is just straight Facebook. So when I contacted her to thank her, she said, please don't mention it on Facebook because I know so many realtors, uh, and they'd be so upset. Yeah. But she goes, I know that you're the best. Wow. So she personally did not know me. She personally knows a bunch of them in the area and referred me. How funny. Uh, that's mm -hmm. got to feel pretty good. It's got to it's got to feel like you're doing something right. And by the way, so that agent to agent referral, I think is a, you know, in terms of lead generation channels, right? We have we have our farm and I want to talk a little bit about it if you have a farm, but you know, we have our farm, we have referrals, right? We have our our networking groups, we have all those, but I think the agent to agent referrals, I think people, you know, uh, they, they either take them as just serendipity, but they never go out and, and try to foster those. And, and on our show recently, we had Wendy Poppas on, which is uh, Jay Poppas on, the co-author of Millionaire Real Estate Agent. Uh, she didn't have a network, and by utilizing or tapping into Jay's uh, contacts, uh, she did $20 million her first year in real estate working part-time uh, and 80% of that was agent-to-agent -agent referrals. Especially if you're in an area that is an area that either people are going to or coming from. Right. You know, and I always believed in, I, I never saw agents as my competition. I saw them as my colleagues. Mm. Always believed it, always treated it that way, yeah. and was just as concerned in building relationships inside the business as I was out. And actually today I'm the, uh, our Long Island chapter of the Women's Council of Realtors. I am the president of our chapter. So again, that just you know, shows that I, I'm really involved in my industry and building that rapport with agents, not only here, but now on a national level. I spoke down in Washington at mid-year two weeks ago. So be able to be in front of, of these great top agents, very involved agents from around the country has been an avenue for me to build business to get more referrals from around the country. Yeah, that is. And it's a very smart move. Yeah, <laughs> you know, if you say so yourself. No, I, I agree. I think I think that is a great move. And uh, um, and I think the other thing, too, is so, so you know, that's, again, you're going to get business from that. But if you were going to, uh, try to list my house and right you're going to come over and you're going to give me your listing presentation and you know i'm going to have two other people that i'm going to interview if you tell me that you know hey i'm the president it, it your credibility with me just goes up like crazy yep right if it, you, if yeah, it's yeah i i use this line I, and i say it all the time i aggressively market to the end consumer who's the buyer of your home but i market just as aggressively to other agents right because they have what we want they have the buyer, and you're hiring me to market your property. So my job is to get as much exposure to your property as possible. So other realtors are very, very important to me when it comes to that marketing. Right. So, so for you, Joanne, right? So you have you in terms of your profile, right? So you are enhancing your profile. You're the president of this this women's chapter of realtors, right? You're going out and speaking. The other thing that that you that you lightly mentioned earlier. And I want to talk about how it enhances your profile is you go out and you do interviews with business owners in the community. Talk, talk to us a little bit about, about why you do that and what that looks like. All right. Well, actually, it's, I love where I, uh, I grow up. I, I love where I live. I believe in my community uh, very much. And I love selling it. So when I'm out, I... I do things like this on purpose. I'm going to take, have a cup of coffee with an agent or even a client or something like that. I always choose to try to go into my market and have a cup of coffee there right. in, a, in, a, in a diner or a little cafe or whatever, and I make sure that I use you know, a four square when I'm there. 
and let people know what I'm doing and where I am at, take a photo. And I, I, you know, if I have the opportunity and the owner is there, I'll, you know, do a little interview with them. Hi, this is Joanne Mills from Exit Realty Premier. And I'm here with, and tell me a little bit about how long you've been here. Tell me a little bit, you know, just real quick, short video, but it's a conversation. If it's a conversation, it's very, very easy for them. They forget that they're even being videoed. And then I post it out there on my, my social media, on my community pages, tag everybody. So to them, I am promoting their business. I care more about them. You know, I care about their business. I care about them making money. I care about the community. And other community members and, and people around us see that, and it just it, it gives them that feeling that I care, and right. I do. Yeah. I truly do. So when they need something in the business, Sometimes not even in the business. They might just need have a question or or need something in the community. I will get a phone call, uh, you know, ask you know asking how if I had advice or how can I help, and that's what I want. I want to be that person that they think of, and if I can put them together with somebody else and be that connector and, and be able to help somebody else in their business, that's perfect for me. That's what's what I love. Builds my referral source. It builds. My reputation. Right, right, right. No, I love that. It's Look, and, and right, and for our farm, right. That's the thing we should always do, right. We want to try to become the mayor of mm -hmm. our of our area, our market. Do you have a farm? I mean, I know seventy percent of your business comes from referrals. Um, do you have a farm, Joanne? And, and well, I, if basically I do, but I don't use it the way I used to, and and that might actually change a little bit because it used to be, you know, those direct marketing pieces. There's, you know, those the things that go into that neighborhood that and we kind of let technology take that over and i personally have seen a dip in the phone calls directly from a community that weren't referred to me in the recent year from the fact that we are not using that touch anymore and i'm actually changing my marketing a little bit to bring that back into it it's how i built my business to begin with back in the you know, 2000, 2000, you know, the beginning of my business was always that direct marketing that right into their homes. And so when it comes to the sellers, I think that that needs to be a piece that you need to keep in your arsenal and to go back into farming that neighborhood, not just using the social media or the print ad it needs to be in their mailbox. Right. And what else? So in terms of uh, how you farm, what, what else do you do in terms of uh, how are you going to start to work it now? Well, I'm, I'm going to there's, do a multimedia type of a, a campaign where it is a direct marketing pieces, but, it, you know, not just, it, more about, also about the industry, because I find that a lot of people are still out there farming with, you know, the recipes yeah, and, and things like that, and I don't want to be known as that. I want to be known as the expert. So it's going to be very targeted to what we do, What's going on in, in, in the market? I know that you have Steve, Steve Harney on recently. Mm -hmm. uh, even in my local ads, I use a lot of Steve's um, uh, information because it's so timely and so on topic in my local ads about the market, about what's, you know, what's about to happen, what's, you know, and especially the graphics and the infographics. Very good information. Very, a quick snapshot. And be seen as the expert. And, you know, it's, it's, it's all about timing, but you need to be in front of them when, at that moment. Right, right. right. Um, so when you, you said ads, what kind of, are you talking about, do you do Facebook ads or what? what, what well, I, I do, but I, I'm talking about local market um, print ads. I mean, I still do them. It's, it, in like it, a newspaper? Yeah, I Amazing. know. Amazing. I know, not like I used to, not like in the big publications. It's more really, really community um, targeted. Okay. So it's, and it's, I find, I don't know, maybe it's the age group, um, but the sellers in our area are, you know, a little bit older. <laughs> and when I market in, in a local ad, it's really not for a buyer, it's for the sellers. So they, they, cause that seems to be when they're ready to start, you know, when they're thinking about it, the first thing you do is they open up that local paper. The buyers are never going to look, look for a house there. They're going to, you know, open up their phone or their their laptop or whatever and start there we know that 97 percent of them yep but the sellers a little different 
little different. The sellers still look into that. It's just that mindset still. That 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 community paper, and it's a it's a demographic. The demographic it, it depends on where you're working. Yeah, and that's right. Right. It's also very. Um, yeah. Look, I mean, I'm in San Diego, so that would not be the case here. Mm-hmm. So. Um, yeah. Real, it is. So I, certain communities. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no, no. That's fine. Um, uh, I think that you made your point. I think that was a good point. You have, uh, in terms of web leads, right? So I, I just, I can go to JoanMillsRealty.com, and that's Joanne your, Mills. that's your. Uh, I'm sorry. Joanne Mills. Joanne, I'm sorry. I'm, sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm, <clears throat> I'm looking at a picture of you right now. Um, mm-hmm. And then if I go JoanneMills.com, it gives me a home valuation site. It's uh, LindenhurstHomeValues.com. Um, this is where you get web leads. Mm-hmm. Well, I do market in a lot of the major sites, and I have my own site, actually a couple of them. And you know, we were even asking before about social media. I do actually, depending on, it's always targeted and always focused. Use Facebook advertising mm-hmm. to get you know to move people to where I need them to go. So yeah, I do a lot of that kind of marketing, and I, I get a lot of leads. You know, web leads to me are just your numbers. You've got to go through them. You know, if you look at it, especially for a, I, I'd even say a buyer or a seller, because it's so easy and so convenient for them to just, like, type something in and send it away, they tend to be long-term leads. Yeah. You know, uh, because they, they, that, that, they, they haven't done their research yet. They haven't done all that stuff. They just, it's so easy and so simple just to, you know, type something in and hit send that at the beginning, the very, very beginning of their process, they will, you might, you might hear from them. So then you need just to incubate them. You need to be able to follow them up and put them into your database and, and you know, be there when they're ready. And, but go through them and then you'll find a couple hot. So it's numbers. Right, right. So you know, I recently had Buddy Blake on the show, and Buddy is a big time home valuation site, as well as Mitch Reback. Uh, I haven't aired that one, but um, uh, so both Mitch and Buddy, they will get more than I think Mitch gets like two or three thousand web leads a month from these home valuation wow. sites. Buddy gets about a thousand. Uh, how about you? I know you're in a different kind of market, but we'll- yeah, different kind of market. Um, you know, it certainly wouldn't be the. I mean, that's a full time job for a couple of people. Oh yeah. That many um, web leads a month. Actually I just got a phone call a few minutes ago from Trulia trying to sell me something else. <laughs> you know, they always try to sell you something else. Um, I do I do get a lot less than that in my market. <laughs> okay. It's a lot less than that. I might have to move where are they? <laughs> uh, right, well, yeah, Mitch is in Florida and actually uh, Buddy is like somewhere in the heart, like Oklahoma or something weird. Um, wow. <clears throat> He's yeah. got to be. That's a, you must be getting a lot of uh, a lot of territory there. Yeah, and look, and here's the thing. So he, the reason why I brought those guys up is, well, number one for the numbers, I want to get a sense of your numbers. But number two, Buddy, in terms of this, you know, he will incubate them for up to like five years, mm-hmm. and he's had deals like right where he's he collected that email address five years ago, and they finally, right, half a decade later, pull the trigger and 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 you know do a transaction with him. Um, <clears throat> If web leads are, you know, very long-term plays, does it even make sense to, to pay Zillow or Trulia for, for that kind of thing? It's a great question. I mean, and if you really think about it, you're really paying them for your own leads on your own stuff. Yeah. It's a great, it's a great system they got going on there. Yeah, it's a racket. Uh, yeah, it is a racket. But the, the, the thing is that, you know, it, you have to – it seems as though – you have to be there. Um, you know, I get tons of buyer leads every day from Truly and Zillow. Hmm. Uh, and we weed through them, but we just keep them, you know, on that back burner. And hope when they pop, they pop. But you have to pay to actually even be pushed up there. Yeah. I had an agent in my office who had, you know, we get syndicated everywhere automatically. He had a listing for three months on those sites. And he had no activity. The seller was very not happy. Seller called me because he knew me. So I helped out, put my name on it. They became featured. Within a week, there was a thousand hits. There when there was literally nothing before. Amazing. So even on those sites, even though they're syndicated and you're there, 
it doesn't matter if you're there. They still need to be pushed up. So it goes. So in terms of, um, I don't know if you want to answer that earlier question. So is it? I know you know you have to be there, and you can have a free profile. But you know, is it worth paying those guys? In your opinion? Well, you know what I, I you know, I think it is because I can actually use it in my listing presentations. Okay. I show my sellers how I am paying to market them, how their homes are going to stand out. Yes, you can hire anybody, and yes, you'll be on the site. But how are you going to? How many hits are you going to get? Let me show you that anyone can be syndicated here. It's just like MLS. MLS is a tool, right? It, it, how you have to be? You have to be stood out. How do you get stood out? You have to be marketed correctly. You have to have all of these extras, and that you know photos and the wording and you go into that whole thing. You have to stand out above the crowd, and that's how I use that, and that gets me business. So, yeah, I pay. So, yeah, okay. Look, Joanne, I mean, I'm sure you're a great salesperson, right? You're, I mean, you're, you 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 have a you have this profile, right? That that is elevated, both in the community and and nationally. Um, what what do you think is the key to landing? You know, you go to a listing presentation. How often do you win them, and, and you know, what do you think is the thing that really makes you stand out above the rest of the crowd? That's another great question. Sorry. Um, yeah, it's another <laughs> great question. You know, I would say 9 out of 10, if I get in the door, they're mine. Wow. And then I'm not, you know, it's just because I, it's, this is what I do. This is what I love, and I think that comes across. I also, you know, I am a student of this business. Mm -hmm. I am very involved not only in our community or in the Long Island community of, uh, you know, our, our MLS and our uh, Long Island Board of Real Estate, but also on a national level. And I express those things, you know, that I don't do anything else other than this. I don't – actually, I say I don't do real estate. I am real estate. Mm, and, uh, that's interesting. You know, cause, yeah, because I love, I love what I do. And every home to me, every listing appointment is a new, brand new store. And it's a new opportunity um, that we're going to look at this together. We're going to come up with a strategy. We're going to, I'm going to give you all my advice. I'm going to give you my, edu educate you on everything you need to know. And then together we're going to come up with the best way to move forward. And I build that trust with them and create the strategy with them. And then we're partners in this. And yeah. It, it, that's the difference. The difference is, you know, I'm not, I'm going to be different. I'm, I'm going to show them my value. Yeah, and look, you have that passion, right? It's, it's, you know, you don't do real estate, you are real estate. You love it. And I, I think, you know, everybody I've had on the show, that is one common theme, mm -hmm. uh, is that people love what they do. And I think you have to love what you do if you're going to succeed in this business. It's too any hard. Business, you read any success book, right? Any yeah. success book, and, and it's always about, you have to love what you do. You have to have a passion for it, and you have to find the love for it and bring that out and people see that and then they want to be around that and they're attracted to it. Right. And I think you said something like about that earlier about, you know, you attract people, you know, you do all the stuff to attract. So, you know, you've seen a lot of people come and go in your career, right? You've seen people mm -hmm. that have talent that have not succeeded and you've seen people without talent succeed. Cause I certainly have, I, you know, I, mm -hmm. I bring some people on the show sometimes and I'm like, there's no, like, where is your personality, but you still put up $50 million on the board. You know, what do you think is the biggest hurdle for, you know, for real estate entrepreneurs? What do they have to overcome in order to be successful? That is, I see it all the time, and it could be very, very frustrating because you believe in people more than they believe in themselves. Right. You see talent in people. You see the ability. You see the passion for that. And then you see it fizzle. And it comes down to this. They have a lid, and it's self-imposed. They, they, they can only reach so far. They keep hitting that lid and keep knocking themselves out. <laughs> what do you Literally. mean? But no, unpack that a bit. I don't, I'm not, I don't, I'm not right. that I understand. Everybody, you know, when you look at people and you say, they, they, you know, you said the average realtor is 57 years old. Yeah. I think the average realtor makes... I don't know. I, I'm bad at these numbers, but twenty, thirty thousand dollars a year. Yeah. Right. I know. Oy, right. Yeah. Um, why? Well, that's what they believe they can do. That's their lid. So I believe you have to take your lid off. You have to have a higher sense of self and a belief. 
that you deserve more and can be more. And that takes a lot more than just knowing your market. That knows yourself. That's knowing, you know, becoming a student of success, of learning from those people and saying, I can be more. I can do more. And I found my business truly changed when I surrounded myself with great mentors, Mm. um, not only in my direct office, but I went and and seeked out others, um, great teachers, great, you know, people who keep me accountable. And then I went outside of the industry to find even more about getting my belief level about me even higher and taking my lid off. So once I, once I achieve that, and I'm always working on it every day, that's not done, but that's when there's just no, no limit to this. I always knew that this income, this industry, once I became, got my license and got, and I always say, I, you know, I got on the island, <laughs> um, I burnt the boat, I didn't work part time, I got in this industry and just that's what all I did. I knew it was unlimited. I knew I could make as much money as I was able to do. It was up to me. I always knew that, but those numbers never really got way up there until I took my lid off. So for somebody in this industry, need to work on that. And if it's, if it's not just about knowing, you've got to know what you're doing. You've got a good, good marketer. You've got to be a good relationship builder. You've got to be a good follow-up. You have to be good at, you know, your inventory, all that kind of stuff. But you also got to know yourself and you got to allow yourself to be successful. Right. Well, I, I think, you know, th- that that question, I mean, I just I, I felt it come over the airwaves, man. You you resonated with that question and, and taking your lid off. And, you know, what you said there, I mean, the heart of what you said for me was when you found mentors, right, that's the thing that helped you. And it comes back to community, right? Mm-hmm. I, I This quote I see in the show, right, the, the, the law of five. You're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Mm-hmm. Um, how, what was the process for you to go out and find mentors? Because a lot of people go like, you know, there are people in the audience, you can go hire a coach, but not everybody has an extra 500 bucks or 1,000 bucks a month to, to do that. Um, how, how did you go find those, you know, ad hoc mentors that, that help you level up your game? It started really with um, a business associate. I can tell you it was a, a mortgage professional who um, recognized talent in me, and I'm sure they've seen a lot in a lot of different people and, and you know, were disappointed too you know, when they're investing in, in agents. And he started to put me in front of people and connected me with other people. Um, so I, it was really kind of organic for me which was wonderful um, where, you know, when I would meet somebody and look up to them and, and felt a kinship with them, I was able to build a relationship with them. It was very, very organic, um, including, and I know, cause I know you had him on recently, uh, Steve, uh, Steve Harney from keeping current matters mm-hmm. of a great mentor of mine. When I decided hmm. I wanted to have a team, I, called him up and he sat down with me and we had lunch and we had a great conversation and he really opened up my eyes and gave me advice and the, you know, him and a, and a few other people. And now it's gone to a different level when it comes like to a women's council or it's people in the industry and outside the industry I admire who are doing a lot, but who always, what comes forth from them always first is that they care. Right. You know, it's, it's how much they care. You know, it's not what they do, it's how they do it. That's how my motto is not like, people don't care what I do. I could talk to you to death about buying and selling a house. It's how, it's why I do it. What is it the love I have for it? And that's what I've found through my mentors. And I'm very, very lucky um, who people come into my life and, I'm, and, they, and they want to help me and they're offering the opportunity and when people offer here's another key one you're gonna you're gonna share this one I think is people do get opportunity every single day they just got to take their blinders off and see it yeah and when they get offered step up to the plate and accept it yep say yes say yeah. yes <laughs> that's part of taking that lid off because people don't say ah, oh, they really don't mean it I'm not that good. They don't want to waste their time with me. Whatever it is that's going on in their head, that little conversation that they're having, because we all have it, they got to shut that thing up and say yes. 
Right. I agree. And look, and what you said, I mean, I think, you know, for the audience out there, I think, you know, you said something very, very important is, you know, you re- Steve Harney is a big, big name, right? They, they call him the Oracle of real estate. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Um, you just, you sent him a cold email. You just reached out. And the next thing you know, you're having lunch with a guy and, uh, you know, <clears throat> and then, you know, he's helping you level up. And I think that more people should do that. More people should, should reach ask. out. <clears throat> yeah. Ask. Ask. You know what? People, and I find this too, because in you know different positions you get into life, and as you move up, you look for people to rise and step up. And you can't help everybody, but the ones who's got their hands waving in the air, and they're in your face, and they they're, they're hungry and they want it, you're going to invest in them. So you know, wave your hand, make a phone call, send out an email to someone you admire, someone you respect, and if you are serious, and they will respond to you. Yeah, I, I'm phenomenally lucky that way that uh, that you know a lot of different speakers because it's part of my future I want to do that when I get to meet them and have dinner with them or conversation with them they're willing to share with me you know what it takes what I need to avoid that's a big key right Um, you know what's the pitfalls I'm a very lucky girl when it comes to to people willing to give me uh, advice help and, and mentorship and I accept it. Nice. I love it. I mean, is that, how long did it take you? So, you know, when you got into re- real estate, you know, how long did it take you to realize that, that you had to, to, you know, surround yourself with a better class of people? I don't know mm-hmm. if that's a right, that's, uh, I don't know if I... No, you know, you know, because a lot of times you might be the big fish in a little pond. Yeah. And you're comfortable there. Right. Right. And I was in the beginning of my business, um, you know, quickly the big fish in a little pond. But it wasn't enough. You know, I, I kind of like being the little fish in a big pond who's willing to work really, really hard because I love up in my game. I love playing with a better player. You know, uh, that to me, that, com- that I talk about our colleagues, but that's where the competitiveness comes through. I'm like, oh, I didn't know you could do that many transactions a month. Okay, well, now that I know, get out of my way. You know? Right. So it's, it is just, this is, this whole industry, this whole, what we do done right is just fun. Yeah. You know, look, so you, Joanne, you have a ton of stuff going on, right? So you're the, you know, you're, you are a top producer, you're the president of the, the women's chapter. I mean, you, you go out and you, you know, you teach stuff, you help people uh, grow. How do you stay productive and focused on a day-to-day basis? Hmm. Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> is it? It's just, it's just a great question because it's, it is a natural state for me. I, and it, I, it's the books I read. We talked about the books of people you hang out with, um, the expectations you put out there of people. You know, it's just, but it comes all down to my why. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you, you, people do these different things for different reasons. Their children, their, you know, th- their ego, whatever. Um, and I'm going to tell you, you're going to laugh at me a little bit, but my why, if you open up my phone, there's a picture of my mom and dad. Hmm. And that pops up first. And my, um, my dad's 96 years old wow. and my mom's 20 years younger. I'm not allowed to tell you how old she is. You have to do the math. <laughs> okay. uh, and they live with me and my husband oh, and wow. I'm a very lucky girl. And they are my biggest fans, believers, and my biggest reason. And I love making them proud. Amazing. Were you, Joanne, are, are you the oldest? No. No, I have four brothers. I'm are you actually the, the, yeah, I tease. I have four brothers. I have three older brothers, and um, I tease them. The only reason they were around is because my parents wanted me, and my last brother was just habit. Right, 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 right. So, so, so your why is, you know, you have these, I mean, that's awesome. You have a strong family. You know, you're, you're mm-hmm. taking care of your folks. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and, but what is your why? I mean, I don't know that I, I, your why is, you got it. it's making them proud is, oh, okay. is achieving the, you know, they've, I, I'm telling you, they've always been my biggest cheerleaders and they've always told me I can do it, you know? And once I started to believe, yeah. uh, then, you know, that's when I took my lid off, right? They always believed, they always knew it. And, um, so they just, they just, some reason they're my core and they they just make me 
want to do more. You That's know, awesome. and they, you know, when I, you know, I actually was just it was in an article in Success Magazine last month, and it was they were in the article with me. So, to be have my 96 year old dad in Success Magazine just thrilled, tickled me to death, tickled me that my dad is a, you know, my mom and dad are in that, that article with me. I, and, and I don't even, didn't even understand, I don't think they understood how big that, you know, that readership is. Yeah. But it just tickled me. I loved it. <laughs> how did you, real quick, Jen, and we're going to start wrapping up here in a few minutes, but how did you do that? I mean, that's, uh, I mean, how do I get an article in Success uh, Well, magazine? it was an advertorial from my, my corporate company. Okay. So they, they interviewed me and it was about my why. Mm. Um, and so it was an article about them and it was a phenomenal response from around the country where uh, people who I haven't seen in 20 years, uh, thank goodness, recognize me, even though my last name is different. Um, so I got responsible over social media, but then phone calls and people from around the country were just, re they resonated with them, this, my, my story. And it was through my corporate company that I work for who wrote that article about me. Got it. That's awesome. I, I actually just mm -hmm. was uh, interviewed by uh, a few weeks ago. Like two interesting things happened. Uh, Yahoo reached out to me and uh, mm -hmm. interviewed me. Uh, and then later in that week, um, I, uh, a, a TV show reached out to me. They were looking for a host of a new uh, of a new show called uh, Realty Ref. Um, so, uh, on a, so here, let, let's wrap it up. Here is the, the last three questions I ask. I start with, you know, imagine I'm a, a, an aspiring agent. I have 25 bucks. What mm. book should I go buy today? Wow, 25 bucks. <laughs> you know, it, it's the magic of thinking big. Mm. By who? Who wrote that? I'm so bad at that. Yeah, um, me too. I'm so bad at author's names. Well, I mean, this book was written almost a hundred years ago. It's, it's, you know, it's like my, make, how to make friends and influence people. These success books that were written all the way back then, Dale Carnegie just came to me, I think. Oh no, it's a David, uh, the magic of thinking with David J. Schwartz. Um, okay. I, I, the magic of thinking big, cause that's the key to me is that you got it. When I keep telling you to take that lid off, that's the lid. When people think too small, when they don't believe in themselves, they don't know that they can be whatever they want to be. So that's my book. I love it. And look, and, and I'm looking at Amazon right here. So the, the three, and this is probably three great books, The Magic of Thinking Big, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, mm -hmm. and then How to Win Friends and Influence People by, by Carnegie. Um, yeah. By the way, if anybody wants a free copy of this book, just go to audibletrial.com slash superagentslive and get a free copy. Hey, uh, the other, so, you know, you're kind of a, you know, you're, you, you stay ahead. You know, we, you talked about being an early adopter. Do you have an internet tool, uh, you know, like an Evernote that, that, uh, you're in love with? Hmm. I, you know, I, I, I'm really loving, and it's not, I have Evernote. I use that all the time. Um, I'm still old school. I still got to write notes, but I just love Google. I love their, their right. platform. I yeah. love, you know. I, I, you know, I'm able to share my calendar with my team and I'm able to do so many different things and keep on top of my business because as busier you get, you know, you need to be, you know, basically told you need to be moving on to that next thing. So my calendar helps me with that. Uh, everything ties into all of my mobile devices and, you know, keeps me on track most of the time because my personality is I'm, I'm always running, always out there, but I'm da definitely not the details. Right. And me neither. Um, yeah. You know, I look, I, I think I'm going to actually do a show about about how to do that, how to become a, a true digital agent. I think uh, I think uh, if people be, can become more organized, they, they you know, they're going to get more stuff done. Hey, our last question is, you know, what about a personal habit? Do you do you have a personal habit that you feel have contributed to your success? You have to give me an example of a personal habit. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what. My personal habit is is I just wake up early. I'm up at like 4.35. I don't have an alarm clock. I just wake up early. And, and I go to bed early because I'm up so early. But, I, you know, I tend to get a lot of stuff done in the quiet mornings. So that's my personal habit. I, I need to adopt some good ones. Um, <laughs> personal habits. You know, I just... I, I have to think about that. I don't know if I can answer that question. That's yet. funny. I, look, that's okay if you don't. You know, I mean, you know. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna, now, now I'm going to have to focus on that and, like, actually say, okay, I need to 
be more clear about something like that. And you, I'll let you know as soon as I have one that I think <laughs> is helping me. Awesome. Well, look, I appreciate, you know, I appreciate that honesty and I, and, and throughout, you know, you've done that the, throughout this whole interview. You've, you know, you've been honest and authentic. So I appreciate you coming on. Um, where can people, and look, I, I, here's what I always encourage my audience to do. You know, I will say thank you for coming on the show. I, I hope everybody in the audience, there's lots of nuggets in here that people can, can go and implement in their business today. So everybody on the audience, if you've enjoyed this episode, reach out to Joanne, you know, and say thank you for coming on the show. And, and where can people find you, Joanne? You know, the best way, if you go to Joanne Mills, which is J-O-A-N-N-E, M-I-L-L-S dot me, mm, it's yeah. my little digital business card. Awesome. So on there, I'll have all my social media, I'll have all my contact information, and they'll be able to find it. And they could find me any way they'd like to find me between Twitter and Facebook and Google and all that stuff. So Joanne Mills dot me and my phone number, everything will be right there. Joanne, thank you so much for coming on the show. And, uh, after Probably this, was great, you yeah. great question. <laughs> awesome question. Well, I'm gonna have to pick your brain on, on who else, uh, that you know that I should have on. All right. All right. We'll talk to you soon, Joanne. All right. Thanks. See you, pal. Let's go. 